so I was thinking about the hurricanes, particularly because my mother-in-law actually lives in New York, and they were worried about storm surges and hurricanes only yesterday, and hurricane season is upon us. Now, FEMA are issuing advice on what you need to have to last the hurricane season. So we've come here to get a few things. First things first, a hand blender. A USB car charging port. A pocket radio. And a torch. Okay, so we're back with our shopping and let's make a start with this thing, which is the hand blender. What you do is tip it out, open it up and get the motor out of there. Now it's easy enough, there's a couple of screws, just undo them. Okay, that's it so open and that's what we're after, which is the motor and it just flips out. Do you get your motor out, you're going to need one of these, which is a terminal block. If you take out one of those, you have that. And that allows you to connect anything to the motor. So you screw it on the top and you can see I've just put a piece of steel in there a nail, a bar, whatever it is, because on that piece of steel, if you happen to have one of these, you can connect that up, and we have ourselves a generator. There we go. <laughs> now you'll get sort of 50, 60 milliamps turning at that speed at around about three or four volts going into there to light that up. So it's not, un, uh, not poor. However, you may not have one of these which is just a hand drill but the chances are you do have one of these which is an egg whisk so we need to cut these whisk bits off once you cut the ends off you stick one end into your terminal block that's attached to your motor and get ready to crank now again you'll produce about 2.73 volts it'd be about 60 80 milliamps something like that depending on your strength and how long you can actually crank for but if we crank for that, there we go. And we're lighting our light. So remember, <laughs> this is very MacGyver, I'll give you that. But we're talking about hurricane preparedness. And I went out and bought these things. But to be honest, the chances are you've got these things in your house already. So you can actually generate power. Now, of course, you don't want to do it directly. Because as you're wandering around with a torch, you don't want to be cranking. So we need some kind of storage. Because what we're going to do is store it and then use it rather than try to use it directly and the cranking bit where you've rigged up your own generator is going to the bit where you store it so both this and the egg beater are of course a gear mechanism got a big gear going to a little gear and then be able to spin that faster now according to stanford an average human can produce something like 60 watt hours from arm strength alone so it's going to be some cranking but you'll be able to charge some things up now this will only work while you're cranking it and of course that's not a lot of use what you want to do is to be able to store that energy and you've got a number of options one thing is to charge these these are super capacitors they're 2.7 volts 500 farad green cap super capacitors charge a few of them and you're going to have yourself a battery bank or you can do what i do uh, i've done <laughs> a lot of videos on how to make batteries and super capacitors of your own and this is one of my super capacitors it's uh, made out of tin foil and the uh, carbon that you found in a fish tank and it's a saltwater based electrolyte. I've got one of those right here. When you've done that, of course, we'll get our radio, take it open and the radio uses two batteries and you can see them, the battery connector right there. And if we just clip our supercapacitor that we've pre-charged, to the inputs, Press on the power. Isn't that awesome? Back off of this one, and these are batteries in series, so we click to the uh, beginning and the end of that series, press the button, and <laughs> we have light. <laughs> and the last thing to talk about is this. Okay, this is meant to go in your cigarette lighter port, so the outside bits here are the negative and that's the positive, so obviously you would clip onto here and clip onto there or sellotape it on there, and then you can plug your phone in there and charge your phone. So to recap what we've done, we took a hand blender, <laughs> an egg whisk or a hand drill, and turned it into a little portable dynamo. We used that dynamo to charge, in our case, our homemade supercapacitor we made from aluminium and fish carbon. 
Now you can buy those supercapacitors and they look like that. Then we use that energy source so that we could play a radio or we could light a light. You don't need to put the batteries in there. If you take the back off, you can see where the batteries begin and end and you just clip onto there. So a lot of this stuff people will just have around. So if you are in an emergency situation, you do need to do something like listen to an emergency broadcast, make a telephone call or use some light. You probably already have that stuff in your house. If not, it's probably not something people are thinking about. So you can always just buy it and use it as you would normally use it. And then you'll have it when you're in an emergency situation to construct yourself a generator. Have some power to do those things that FEMA recommend. Now they also recommend that you have seven days of food that you don't need to cook available to you. And my mother-in-law actually fills her bathtub with water. It's so she can flush the toilet. So if there's a hurricane coming or a situation like that, she fills the bathtub so that everything can be kept nice and hygienic. Anyway, I thought I'd share those thoughts with you because um, we were talking to my mother-in-law on the phone and she did raise these as interesting points. I thought a video would be of interest that you don't need to be stuck. This stuff you can just scavenge from bits and pieces around you. I didn't go into how to make this supercapacitor. I don't plan on. There is an awful lot of other people's videos as well as my videos detailing how to make something like that, but it is incredibly easy. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.